delay after delay after delay, the very first movie in Phase 4 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe is here with Black Widow. After an amazing send-off with Avengers Endgame, an enthralling epilogue with Spider-Man Far From Home, and three shows that push the limit of what stories Marvel is capable of telling, Natasha Romanoff gets her long-overdue movie to follow in the wake of that success. So, I went into that theater, and... What the hell was that? Okay, okay, off the bat. Let's cover what happens in this. Black Widow follows Natasha during the events after Civil War, as she teams up with her strange spy family to thwart the evil Taskmaster and the Red Room for mind-controlling an army of assassins. Simple, right? Well, let's dress the elephant in the room. Nat's dead in Endgame, so that immediately ruins a lot of the tension and weight this movie could have had, because we know where this character ends up at this point. It doesn't even provide any extra insight that led up to her decision to throw her off the cliffs of Vormir. It feels like it belonged in Phase 3, after Civil War, rather than kickstart a brand new era of Marvel movies. So that already knocks a point out for engagement metrics. Sure, we've had Marvel projects about dead characters before, but those movies and shows took advantage of our knowledge to give us more unique stories. WandaVision was a mystery in the sense that we knew Vision is dead, and a whole show wants you to speculate why and how he's alive and how that ties into the world Wanda created. And Loki deals with an alternate timeline version of Loki coming to terms with what would have been his fate and becoming someone new because of it. Here it's just a run-of-the-mill Marvel spy thriller like Winter Soldier or Civil War, but done only to establish one character in the grander universe. On the topic of that character though, I will say that Yelena Belova, who will take on the mantle of Black Widow, is the only kind of saving grace here. Florence Pugh plays her part to perfection, and you go to feel endeared over her and gain a solid understanding of who she is, and it gets you excited for her future in the MCU. And it's great to see girl power continue to be emphasized in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and Yelena is yet another great addition to this growing cast of badasses. But one awesome character doesn't mask the train wreck that lies ahead of us, unfortunately. The action, while really well choreographed, is poorly edited at points, filled with cuts to make it hard to digest and particularly enjoy those scenes. The villains? Absolutely laughable. You spend barely any time with them to absorb how much of a threat they are, and Taskmaster is only Taskmaster by name. I won't spoil who they are, but when you're adapting a villain, I get changing them for the sake of the theme and all that, but nothing here feels like an improvement over the original source material. Instead of a cocky, incredibly skilled, and morally twisted mercenary with a costume as over the top as a skill set who is capable of taking down even the most superpowered beings, we have a mute, barely defined obstacle in a tacky suit and very unimpressive abilities that a simple family of spies can take down. But probably the biggest mistake of all, that the bulk of all of this movie's problems stem from, is that it feels like a sequel to movies we didn't get. This feels like Black Widow 3, not Black Widow 1. This movie wants to explore Natasha's past, her sins during her days as an assassin, and how everything she has done is coming back to haunt her. The problem is, we need to actually see that. Take a look at Tony Stark in Iron Man 1. We see the amount of destruction and terror that Stark Industries' weapons could do. So when we see those weapons being used on him, we too understand why Tony would have this change of heart and why he would want to fix things. But in Black Widow, because we never really got to see those sins in prior moments, any of her missions before becoming an Avenger, all of this backstory is merely explained to us in dialogue and like one flashback and it just expects us to be invested in all that exposition and buy all the nonsense that happens in the final act because of it. No, that's not how it works. You're breaking the fundamental rule of storytelling, show, don't, tell. But all we get is all talk, no substance. It treats the audience like idiots who would just accept anything it says we should buy, which results in underdeveloped characters we barely get to know, consequences and ultimate culmination that we truly don't understand the weight of, cartoonishly odd concepts and set pieces that we just find ridiculous in a Black Widow movie because there's no setup, and wasted opportunities for stories that I would rather see first before going in on all this plot. If we had like two movies to ease us into all the themes, characters, and ideas, we wouldn't have a problem here, because one flashback in Age of Ultron is not enough for me to guess how this movie would have ended in the stupid way that it did. Yes, the MCU is no stranger to over-the-top locations and characters. It's the nature of being based off a comic book. But the beauty of Marvel is how they expertly make you suspend your disbelief just enough by building your trust gradually so you can embrace the cartoonish moments. Whether it's taking place in a broad location like space, or taking place in a government we already know is pretty advanced, there's already a basis for us to understand a lot of the weirder stuff. We don't know jack about the Red Room, and it looked pretty grounded in Age of Ultron, so when this movie reveals the kind of scope and power they have out of nowhere, it just feels wrong. 
They just didn't earn my disbelief here to the point where I feel like I'm watching Fast and the Furious or Terminator Genesis. But it sucks here because Marvel has such a level of consistency that this film spits in the face of. And why did it have to be Black Widow to get this treatment? One of the original Avengers, the woman who gave her life for the universe, the woman who has waited years to tell her own story, it's a disservice this happened to her. This movie is an example of Marvel thinking they can get away with anything. Just because I'm a diehard fan, I would just eat anything that has their name on it. Well, no. I'm putting my foot down on this one. Black Widow gets my very first Dismal. One good character can't save a movie that barely understands what it means to be a film, let alone a Marvel one. And I dare them to try to pull a fast one like this on me again. <laughs> here? Still wanna know how to watch this? Alright. Black Widow is currently in theaters and streaming on Disney+, Plus, but you do need to pay an extra $30 for it via Premier Access. If you wait till October 6th though, the film would then be free to watch at your Disney Plus subscription. Go ahead, give it a shot, and I really hope you enjoyed a lot more than I did.